just start this video like this. Ready? One, two, three. I've covered this room with a number of plastic bags each American family uses on average every single year in America. So that's 1,500 plastic bags. Again, that's the number of plastic bags that each American family uses on average every single year. That's my American family. <laughs> It's different when you can actually see the plastic bags rather than just hearing statistics on plastic waste, right? Well, that's the point. There are 126 million households in the US, and together each year, we blow through 100 billion plastic bags. 100 billion. That number is so large, I can't even, I can't even visualize it. Plastic bags. They're what prompted me to do this story. I began to notice in the past year how often I looked down and see one in my hand. But plastic bags were really just the start of this tale. All right, here's a spoiler. The bad news is plastic production is spiraling all over the globe, while only 9% is being recycled. The good news is data seems to indicate we've awoken the sleeping beast. The world appears to finally be waking up to this monstrous problem. It's in landfills, streets, and waterways. A plastic nightmare. But why now? And what effect is this snowballing conversation about plastic actually having? First things first. How much plastic waste is already sitting on the planet with us right now? We now estimate that 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic has been produced. And that's equal to about 80 million blue whales, if you can imagine that. Actually, I can't imagine 80 million blue whales. First, I grew up in landlocked Pennsylvania, so it's just difficult to visualize a whale. But then 80 million? A great point from Jenna, but also a good example of why environmental statistics sometimes don't have an impact with general audiences. It's not enough to talk about the billion tons of plastic, as important as it is, to tell the story of, say, an individual who's impacted by that. The entrails of the sperm whale were found to contain more than six kilograms of plastic waste. Vision is our dominant sense and allows us to connect with ideas. But we empathize with individual stories, not numbers. For instance, if I tell you scores of kids in China have been found working and living in the mountains of trash we send to the country, you might listen. But if I show you footage of kids I met in a plastic scrapyard just a few months ago in China, you actually pay attention. We'll come back to this yard in a few minutes. Today's military weapon becomes tomorrow's peacetime instrument. Plastics will play as large a role in peace as they do in war. Here is a plane containing hundreds of plastic parts. Brought into the homes after World War II. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Everything was going swell for plastic for decades. Plastic. Until. The barge, loaded with more than 3,000 tons of garbage, is anchored five miles off Key West. The crew of the tugboat has been at sea for 44 days now. The odyssey continues. In 1987, Americans hit a tipping point when we finally came face to face with our trash, all thanks to the story of a single trash barge circling the country looking for a place just to dump it all. What that story did was raise our awareness about waste, that we were primarily landfilling all of our waste, and that space is going to run out one day. That then brought up the point, well, are there other things we can do with this material? The country responded with recycling. I have never seen anything grip the country like recycling has. So this begs the question. It's a fever sweeping the country. What happened this past year that got so many of us chatting about plastic? The UN estimates by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Well, the simple answer is a perfect storm of viral internet moments and actual foreign and domestic policy changes. 
how to begin. Hmm. It is hot as hell right now. Nah, not there yet. Let's go back a couple more months. Early in 2018, US news and blogs latched onto a story of a kid in Vermont tallying up how many straws us Americans use per day. Um, Oop. Yeah, sorry. That sounds like Milo yeah. now. I, a lot of people picked it up. Um, I talked to three straw manufacturers and I asked them how many straws they estimate we use every day in the United States. And the number that they gave me was about 500 million. Shortly after that, this 2015 video of a bleeding turtle with a straw in its nose went viral for a second time. She's going to be so happy. It was a perfect one-two combo that got everyone talking about straws. Bless you. McDonald's shareholders set to vote tomorrow on a proposal to study the risks of using plastic straws. On top of that, clap. Paper straws in the UK were taking off. Discussions on plastic in the world's oceans were trending, and Australia cut plastic bag use by 80 percent. With all this circulating in the media, this also happened. Much of the trash that we all put out for recycling has been piling up in this country, all because of a big policy change half a world away. Let's go deep on this one. At the start of 2018, China stopped taking in our plastic scrap and recyclables, which the US and many developed countries had been sending for decades. And this shift in policy in China may prove to be one of the most pivotal moments in the managing of plastic waste the world has seen to date. And that is a monumentally big deal for the future of this planet. As China continues its journey from developing to developed, the plastic biz there, it's a booming. For example, the country is home to the largest wholesale market in the world. This trade center in Yiwu, China, also known as Commodity City, boasts some 70,000 booths, selling every trinket you can imagine, much of it plastic. So, for instance, these behind me right now are all made from recycled plastic. So is a lot of this stuff. Wow. Combining the Confederacy and Jason Voorhees is a combination I have never seen before. It is ground zero for knickknacks domestically and globally. This is where your I Love New York magnet comes from, your, your Halloween mask, and where 60% of the world's Christmas decorations are from. This very market. Forget about importing this stuff. China has its own domestic plastic problem, whether because of places like Yiwu or just the sheer amount of bags and bottles being used by a population four times that of the US. To cope, the country is even relying heavily on unofficial trash pickers to deal with the excess of scrap and waste. <laughs> So we're on an informal trash dump outside of Beijing right now where trash pickers from all over the city will come and sell off their bottles, they'll sell off telephone sets. We saw even just plastic, thin plastic brain scans. There's a family here that's counting all the plastic and paying all the trash pickers for what they're bringing. You see it's happening right now. So some of these guys will bring in plastic bottles and then they'll just count it all out. And they'll determine how much plastic they've brought and how much it's all worth. And yet still, even though China is crushed so heavily by the weight of their own plastic, until recently, 
This is also where we were sending ours. You have your skills, you have your skills. Why do you not solve these problems yourself? I think from the environmental perspective, it should be like this. It's like you can produce whatever you can, you can do it as well as you can do it. We, as a Chinese people, have been living for a long time. You don't want to give up your own things. You don't want to give up to others. So with China no longer an option, plastic began being diverted into other ports in Asia simply because, well, we needed to keep shipping it somewhere, anywhere. It felt in so many ways like the 1987 trash barge, but this time happening on a global scale. And now to Thailand. Look at this. So we're at a recycling center on the outskirts of Bangkok. Basically huge stacks of plastic bottles being brought in here. They're being chopped down, cut up, boiled, cleaned, and then ultimately sold. So what you have right here, colored plastic that they can't use. So the plastic chopped down and then a machine in here scans the plastic bits and separates the colored from the clear. The clear they could sell, but this is all just waste, basically. When there is a lot of plastic that comes in, there will be a lot of plastic that comes in. There will be a lot of plastic that comes in. And when there is a lot of plastic that comes in, there will be a lot of plastic that comes in. But there will be a lot of plastic that comes in. There will be a lot of plastic that comes in Thailand. Basically, Thailand is not a long term solution. Basically, Thailand isn't a long term solution either. Not by a long shot. Not only is the sudden dumping of our plastic into Thailand already affecting the environment there, but erratically shifting where we send our plastic trash dramatically affects the local price of the material. The price of plastic scrap has dropped already by more than 20%. Thailand has quickly responded and, like China, says it will ban many of the plastic imports in the coming years. No, it's not, it's not the, the, the solution, right? That you, you have to uh, dispose of your waste, not send to us. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So the question then becomes, what is the solution? Recycling industry did take advantage of the loose environmental governance in China. And, and this is the payback, I guess. But there was a time when we had to stop taking in the plastic. Because uh, for a period of few months, there was no movement at all. And um, till we found other homes for the plastic scrap. As you might expect, by midsummer 2018, recyclables began piling up in other facilities around America. Now recyclables are piling up with nowhere to go. Some cities just stopped accepting them altogether. And this whole problem became visible. Now the reality is here facing right in front of us in our face that we need to, to handle our own plastic scrap. My question then to you is, are you prepared for a future that could exist one day where the United States can't export any of it yes, yes. anywhere else around the world? See, it's the recycling very... industry in our country must realize that even if we are shipping some material to these countries, this, will, this is only a temporary uh, arrangement. That use and throw mentality, use and throw culture has to go away. Says the man who has a bunch of use and throw plastics yes, on the floor. Yes, yes. But <clears throat> the recycling industry alone cannot solve the problem of plastics 
uh, generation. The real solution is at the beginning of the process and saying, maybe we didn't need plastic in the first place. Are there alternatives? Because in the end, it's the service we want. I want something that allows me to carry my groceries home from the grocery store. There's nothing inherently about plastic that I love that I say, gosh, I really want need some more plastic bags. And if there are alternatives, but it's not made out of plastic, it's made out of, say, potato starch, that's about redesigning the way that we provide these services. So back to that first question we had. What effect is this snowballing chatter around plastic ultimately having? I hope the answer is a profound one, but I know that whether in China or Thailand, the US, UK, and many more countries, just talking about our plastic problem is making many of us more fully notice what we're holding on our hands. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to NBC Left Field and one more thing for all those other Pennsylvanians who are watching. I calculated the weight of 80 million blue whales and compared it to something we see a bit more frequently. It's the equivalent of roughly 3.5 billion Ford F-150s. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot.